So after two weeks of putting this together and researching and stuff like that, I've uh, finally come up with a tutorial that you guys can follow. Uh, you're going to need three main textures. Uh, don't mind the planks, but uh, you're going to need a leaf texture, bark textures, and sapling textures, and then import those. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating a uh, sapling block so we're going to create a new block and then give it a name I'm just going to give it my tag and then tell it it's a block and then finally um, we're going to be making a pine tree so pine sapling so my mistake uh, you want to use the blue texture not the red texture uh, when you import uh, or select the textures for the block so once you have all the textures loaded, you can select the blue square as well when you import it first for your first texture, and it will select all the other boxes with the same texture. You want to make it transparent and have a cross uh, model. Uh, next, you want to name the block in the GUI, so I'm just going to call it uh, Pine Sapling, and then you want to change this, uh, the hardness, to like... 0.5 I believe is the hardness for um, saplings and most other thin blocks. Uh, resistance I think is something like 2 or something, I'm not entirely sure on that. You want it under the decorations tab and uh, select axe, I, you don't have to but it's fine. Um, has silk touch, uh, disable that and uh, let's see uh, plant and wood no um, there is a plant one there we go and then I think that's good I don't think there's anything else uh, also check the walkthrough block button here so we're going to be creating pine logs next. I will be doing a more advanced tutorial on logs themselves. I did come across something that will be interesting for a tutorial in the future. So just add the textures. Don't mind that alarm. That's just reminding me to go to bed. And finally, um, you want to create a GUI name, so I'm going to call it Pine Log. I'm going to set it to 15 and leave it at 2. And then select Axe and Wood and Wood. And that's good. Uh, uncheck Silk Touch. And that should be fine. All right, click next. And the next thing that we're going to be creating is the leaves for the tree. So we're going to be working on um, creating the name and then working on textures. So select your texture, select transparency, tra select translucent, and then click next. And finally, you want to name your block so pine leaves you want to set the resistance to I think it was like 0 0.5 or 1 I think it was like 1 maybe 1 and resistance was not entirely sure what the resistance I'm going to put it down to 5 and then you want to select decorations and axe so you want to select a material as leaves and the sound on step is plant and uncheck the s affected by silk touch and uh, let's see what else can we do here uh, select the doesn't drop itself and then select uh, your sapling block and next So once you got all those imported, uh, start up a game, start up a new save, and then start building a tree that you want to um, basically grow. So this can be anything from uh, you know regular blocks to the blocks you've created. Um, this technique will still work with um, 
the structure or the generation that we'll be using. So just start building a tree and um, once you're finished I'll show you what to do next. So once you have your tree built, uh, what you need to do is give yourself a structure block and uh, it's like um, give uh, player and then structure block or Minecraft structure block I think it's called now. So player, Minecraft, structure and then you should be able to use tab and then structure block. So. And once you have that, uh, you can place it at the corner where your axes all meet. So right over here is where they all meet. So just put it outside of your selection area. And then from there you can open up this and go to save and then structure name. Uh, name it whatever you want for your structure model to be. So um, if you're going with pine tree, then I would suggest using your tags as well for your mod. So Northwest Trees Gaming, pine tree, um, you can do pine tree or structure pine tree. I'm going to do structure pine tree because it's more specific. And then you want to figure out your coordinates uh, locations. So what I'm going to end up doing is counting the blocks uh, from the, st the structure or from the block itself and there is a total of eight blocks however I forgot to take the one in consideration which we are shifting it on so it's actually uh, for this size it is um, you don't want that entities one on either just notice that so Let's see, it's not showing right now because we need the y-axis, so I'm just going to count up this way and reach the top of the tree and then just remove all that. And now that I have the coordinates, I can type in the 13 and it will show your selection uh, with the structure block. Now this is built into Minecraft, it's in vanilla Minecraft itself. Uh, so like I said, the selection was 7, not 8. So now you can see that the white lines indicate that where your selection point will be. And once you're happy with your selection, you can just go and click on uh, remove the entities for first thing. And then um, save. And to get to your save folder, uh, the easiest way is to go to options, resource packs, and then open resource folder. And this will bring you to your um, Pilo test environment world. So you just go to run and then you go to, uh, let's see, saves, I believe it is, yeah, saves. And then you find the world that you're currently in. I would suggest naming your world something so it's a little easier selection to find. Uh, this wasn't the new world that I created, so it's the other one, and it's this one. So it's under structures, and then your pine tree nbt file will be here. So once you have that, uh, drag it to your desktop or wherever your workspace is where you're keeping all your files, and just paste it. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now, and then I'm going to deal with it later. And um, you want to go to structures and go import mbt and that's the file so we just need to direct it to our desktop and it's right there how about that and just click open and there you go you have a new structure file imported into mcreator So now that we have that all worked out, uh, we have a structure, we have the sapling, we have the blocks that we need for the thing. What we need to do is create a procedure and this will be the growth procedure. So uh, we're gonna go our tag and then procedure 
and then we're going to call it uh, pine tree and then from there what you want to do is work on creating a basic system so what we're going to do is place uh, where is it remove block so we want to remove the sapling itself and then we want to where is it would it be under world management yeah so under world management place um, your segment file which it should already come up if you have a new um, structure in, imported and um, by default it will offset the selection to the corner of the model so we need to adjust it just a little bit um, depending on your your model you might have to adjust it a little bit more you just play around with uh, growing the sapling um, but I know that this particular model needs to be offset three blocks so we're going to create this one and then minus and we're going to drag that in there there we go okay and then we want to duplicate that remove this and then drag z coordinates in here and then what we want to do is go to math and drag one and select your offset number and I'm going to du duplicate this for the other coordinate here and whoop, drag that over back into there. So that's pretty much good. That's got the whole spawning structure mechanism in place. So you want to create a randomizer um, for the trees as well. So if you create an if statement and grab a randomizer for the condition, let's see, math, and then we want randomizer. Now how randomizers work is um, that they're the equal a number between zero and one uh, this one doesn't or yeah so you want to select less than or equal to and then you want to select your number now this has to be one to zero so zero to one and you can use point whatever um, if you're using equals or less than then it equals a percent so I'm doing it one or ten percent right now so once you have all that worked out uh, you want to link up your um, procedure to your um, your sapling so you want to go to the sapling and then you want to go all the way to procedures and click on when or update tick and then select your procedure here and click next and let that compile Once you have that all figured out, what you need to do is create a second procedure. This one's going to be focusing on placement of the block. And um, I'm just going to call it the basically the same thing, just with place at the end. So in this procedure, you want an if statement and um, no extra trigger uh, event. So just leave the trigger event to no additional trigger and you want to drag over the if else and then also drag over an else statement underneath the if else and that will add on to the if statement so once you have all that uh, we can finally start creating a condition uh, to only test for um, blocks that are dirt or grass and basically we can restrict what blocks it can be placed on rather than it growing on stone or other blocks. So I'm going to get block location and um, we need to remove the y-axis and put in a math operator and y minus and 1 because where the block is um, being placed we want it to check for the block underneath so once we have that we can create a minecraft component and select what block we want to 
um, restrict it to. So I'm going to select grass for the first one and duplicate this. And then select uh, any dirt, which is this one right here. And select that and it will check for any type of dirt. Uh, now we need to create the, the, the event that it will do. So we're going to remove block, but we're also going to place a block. Uh, this will just keep it clean and uh, make sure there's no errors with the block when it's being placed. So we're just going to be placing our sapling. Now if it doesn't have those two conditions, uh, then we, our else statement is what the condition will do if it isn't uh, either of those two things. So we're just going to remove the block with a drop at the current coordinates. And that, So that's all you need to do. Uh, open up your sapling after it's finished compiling. And so when block is placed by uh, select your place procedure and click next and next and let it compile. So once you got that all sorted out and ready to go, uh, you can go and test your block in Minecraft. You can start up the same world or a different world, doesn't matter. And um, I'm just going to show you that you can place it on grass and you can place it on coarse dirt, you can place it on puzzle because that's also dirt, and regular dirt as well. Um, however, it will not be placed on any other type of block uh, because of our condition. And um, yeah, so that, that part's good. Um, also, if you notice, if we change our game mode to survival player, it will remove it once from our inventory, but drop it. So that's good. So the last thing that we need to do is test the uh, time it takes to actually grow the structure. And uh, I have it set to the default uh, game tick, which is three. So I'm just double checking to make sure that it's set to three and it is so it's uh, going to take the regular time um, now when I'm talking about this uh, the only thing that really has the issue is if there is other blocks nearby when the structure does grow it will destroy those structures I haven't found a workaround for that particular issue um, it would have to do with checking to see if there's air at certain locations around the block and if there is then you would have to allow it to grow so it would be an additional um, procedure or condition onto your um, structure growing condition or pr procedure so uh, if you guys can figure that out then that's good but um, I haven't I, I'm kind of on a schedule and I need to get videos out so I'm going to probably work on that on spare time while working on a little bit more easier things that I can get out faster but uh, outside of that, it, it does work and it does grow. It's just it doesn't, um, it can be used as a griefing tool as well, I guess. However, it's good for flattening out terrain if you need to use a tree for that, I guess. But um, outside of that, you can also use the um, procedure that determines the um, randomizer. So you can lower the number and it will make it also longer or you can pass it through another randomizer um, and it will also take even more long. So uh, yeah, so as you can see our pine tree has grown and it will continue doing this at different intervals. Um, it, we planted that other one first so it's uh, not uh, growing the same one. However, it is growing roughly around the same time which I haven't figured out if there's a way around that. Uh, you might be able to put it, pass it through a couple randomizers and it might be a little bit different, but um, it's not the same tree at least, which um, was one of the issues with uh, previous versions that I was testing. But uh, this was the first tree we planted and it's still not grown, so. Outside of that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, put a lot of work uh, over like three weeks trying to learn how to get this far into growing a tree, and I think I was pretty successful at it. 
Um, I hope you guys can uh, use it in some of your mods and um, you can also use it with structure generation. It'll be interesting to see what you guys can create uh, with just a little bit of this. But outside of that, um, yeah, you can change the percentage here to 0 0.1 or whatever and it will um, take longer for it to grow as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching my video guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click that little silver bell for notifications. You can also go to my Google Plus page, I use that as a feed for all my new videos that I publish. If you want to go a little bit further in supporting me, uh, you can also go to my website and do a one-time donation on the donation page or you can subscribe to me on Patreon and, um, and get content earlier than anyone else on YouTube. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, definitely comment in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer your questions or comments. And uh, if I don't get back to you right away, then I might be a little bit busy at the moment, but I will do my best to get back to as many people as I can as with uh, the time that I do have. Uh, thank you for watching my video and I hope to see you next time.